Abhishek Bhalla continues to be with us. Uh, Abhishek, uh, you know, uh, what we're looking at on our screens right now, it is still sinking in for the entire world that the largest aircraft, uh, you know, ever built uh, to fly in this manner, operational at this point of time, is no more. It's been destroyed. It's, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I, doubt, I doubt any aircraft of this kind will ever really fly again. Nobody knows if another one can be built. We do know there was a second one that was almost built to completion, but the economics of it, uh, you know, never really worked out, and therefore it didn't really happen. Antonov, the company that builds this aircraft, uh, Abhishek, as you and I both know, uh, has a big India connection. The Indian Air Force operates operates the AN-32, which is also an Antonov aircraft. It's the backbone of India's transport fleet. So this is going to be heartbreaking and devastating, uh, you know, uh, in the minds of many Indian military professionals as well who will be watching these aircraft. Many of them would have visited the Gostamel uh, Air Base, uh, you know, during upgrade talks and upgrade discussions. So these are going to be familiar, but very, very heartbreaking pictures, even to Indian military, uh, Abhishek. You're right, Shiv, and uh, the AN-32 uh, has been the backbone of uh, India's uh, uh, transport fleet uh, uh, when it comes uh, for military use. And uh, you're right that there'll be several veterans. Uh, uh, you and I have traveled in that AN-32 many a time, and uh, these images are truly very, very heart-wrenching. And also, Shiv, uh, that this airport, you know, uh, why uh, this particular aircraft was targeted? Because uh, the Russian forces actually wanted to take complete control of this uh, airport, which is very close to Kyiv, a very strategic location. And uh, this airport uh, was pounded by uh, Russian uh, missiles before uh, ground troops also closed into it. Finally, they uh, had complete control of uh, the airport. There were contradictory reports later, though, uh, when uh, uh, the Ukrainian uh, uh, authorities and the Ukrainian forces said that they have managed to take back uh, the airport, but the fact remains that there was a pitched battle hmm. for the airport as well, and that's the reason perhaps why, uh, because of which uh, the AN-225 became a casualty. Are you hearing, Abhishek, that the airbase has been taken over by the Russians right now? A lot of destruction seen in that, uh, you know, uh, that, 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 that video which we've been using courtesy uh, Russian State TV Channel 1. Uh, are you hearing that the airbase has been taken over? Are the Russians able to use it? Well, Shiv, uh, there has been a lot of uh, information uh, going on, p perhaps part of uh, propaganda and information warfare. Uh, perhaps on the first few days uh, of the battle, uh, there was uh, an attempt uh, by the Russian forces, uh, which was thwarted uh, by Ukraine. Uh, ever since then, uh, there has been a continuous effort uh, or, or by the Russian forces uh, to take over the airport. Uh, it's still not clear uh, whether they've been completely able to uh, control the airport or is there still some resistance. I believe, Shiv, according to uh, several reports, that there has been uh, some resistance from the Ukrainian side, uh, but uh, Russian forces have been aggressively uh, trying to uh, m make sure that they can have complete control of this airport. Truly, truly a sad moment for the aviation world amidst all the human devastation that is happening on both sides in Ukraine. As Russia continues its military aggression in the country on day nine, take a look at how this nine, these nine days have looked in the war that has devastated some of the most iconic locations of Ukraine. Take a look at what it looks like before and after. The first image that we've just shown you before and after the world's biggest aircraft stationed just north of Kyiv, destroyed into pieces, headed to the scrapyard, a marvelous aircraft that has been reduced to just pieces. A huge aviation legacy has been destroyed in this war. Once a bustling national capital of Ukraine turned into a ghost town after nine days of invasion by Russia. The city is now unrecognizable as shells and missiles rain over it in the suburban areas almost hourly and keeps buzzing with air raid sirens. Here's Kyiv before and after in certain locations. Now let's take you to the Zaporizhia nuclear plant which produces 25% of Ukraine's energy. It has uh, been shelled uh, in its training buildings near the reactors. One part of the auxiliary buildings of the reactor were also sustained some damage, taking parts of it off the grid after Russian forces shelled the facility. 
Parts of it caused, caught fire, raising alarms over a possible radioactive material leak, which was a potential threat for the entire world. Later, Russian forces have also captured this nuclear facility. And this is what day nine looks like. This is what Ukraine looks like on day nine of the continuing invasion. In the last 16 hours, we can tell you, things have visibly and audibly escalated. We'll show you all of those pictures and we'll make you hear the sounds of this escalation in 30 seconds. Come right back, stay with India Today's non-stop coverage.